Hi, I'm James White and I'm the UK's leading prospect conversion expert and I help business owners who are new to sales or don't enjoy sales or just get better at the sales process and turn those target numbers into actual numbers. In today's video, we're going to talk through some of the things you're going to need to consider if you want to bring a salesperson on board into your business. Lots of companies now are looking to hire virtual assistants or sales assistants that can help them achieve the results they've got. So here are key, some of the key things you need to consider when you're looking to appoint a salesperson or someone to have sales conversations in your business. Let's take a look. So point number one, and this is something I always encourage people that I know and work with to do, is to use some form of test in the application process. I've done this a number of times in businesses that I've worked with. If you put a test in your application process, you're going to siphon out the good from the average people. And one of the key things in sales is being able to look at an attention to detail and really understand what the prospect is looking for. So within the applications that you give for someone to join your team, maybe ask them, hide away or put into the actual steps of the application process something that they've got to do. One of the favorite things that I like to do is to actually ask an applicant to maybe provide a 140 character sentence that determines what makes them specialized for the job. And you'll be amazed how many people who apply for the job don't take notice of that key task that I've asked them. Put in a small test if you can within your application process and it's gonna help identify whether your potential salesperson has an attention to detail. Because if they don't show it for you, why are they gonna show it for a prospect? And it's key that you do get people that really understand the prospects and can work with people in the right way. So point number two is to not expect miracles in the first place. I see a lot of people that wanna hire someone into their business because they expect that person to go on this miracle journey and bring thousands of new clients on board when they fail to do it themselves. And they suddenly think just because they're paying someone to do it, that it should happen. It's not gonna happen. And if you can't get the miracles as a business owner, then why should someone that you bring on board in a sales row achieve those miracles just because you're paying them for that? The reality is salespeople, like any other member of staff you bring on board, will take some time to actually get used to your organization and working with you, but they'll also be able to only achieve the results that are realistic. So don't expect miracles. Don't expect someone to hit targets that even you couldn't hit yourself as a business owner. If you do that, you're setting the, the person up for failure and that's just a waste of your time and their time. Be realistic, set realistic goals in the first place. Don't expect miracles from them and you're going to be in a better position to ensure that person works out for you. So point number three, building on that point about realism, is be clear about the targets that you have in place and what you want that person that you bring in the business to achieve. How do you know how many sales calls they should be making per day? How do you know how many prospects they should have in their pipeline? You need to have clear details of what you expect to happen and make sure that those targets are realistic. For example, challenging someone to make 200 calls per day is not realistic and isn't gonna make that person want to engage with you or work for your company. But being realistic about how many calls can be made per day and then setting clear targets for what needs to happen on a day-to-day -day basis is realistic and is a great way of engaging the right type of people. So one of the key things you've got to do is make sure you offer an unlimited commission opportunity. Some people want to bring on people just to pay them commission only. And unless you're selling a very, very high ticket priced item, that's gonna be difficult to achieve. People are gonna want some basic remuneration for what they do and the calls and the activity that they make. But if you can offer them an unlimited commission opportunity so they've got the opportunity to earn as much as they can, then it's certainly gonna attract the right type of people. When you also engage them and ask them about interview questions, ask them how much they want to earn and see whether they set a limit on it themselves. The best salespeople will say, I wanna earn as much as I can and can I earn as much as I can within your organization? And if you give them that opportunity and they show the right aptitude and skills and hunger, then why wouldn't they have the opportunity to do that? It's only gonna benefit you if you've created a commission structure that works and that rewards you and your business as well as the salesperson. So give them unlimited opportunity and you're gonna see a better result from the type of person you bring on board. So one of the things that I've always done with new salespeople that I've employed is to actually ask them to describe their first week in the job. Of course, there is a need to make sure that they're properly trained and given the support and infrastructure to get set up on PCs and the such like. But once those things are done, what does that first week in the job look like for them? The reason this is important 
is the best salespeople will have a desire to get to know the product and service that they're offering and be really chomping at the bit to get in and engage with prospects and to start looking at the list of customers that you've got or list of prospects and pipeline and see how they can start engaging with it. The salespeople you want to avoid are the people that want to settle back and don't want to get into making the conversations and having you know, discussions with prospects until they've done training, until they've spent this and done this and done that. And actually, do you know what? If they're not hungry from day one, why are they going to be hungry in week four or week six? The reality is if they're keen, they're really chomping at the bit to get in contact with those prospects, then that's a great sign. And it shows you you've got someone with hunger, that has got attitude and a desire to earn money and to make your business a success. So you should be, when you engage with new salespeople to join your company, doing one thing certainly within your interview process. You should be asking them to sell what you do to you. And imagine if you actually have someone trying to sell your company and what you offer to you. It's a surreal experience, but it's something you have to do and should be doing if you're going to appoint someone as a salesperson. Why? It does two things. It firstly shows whether the salesperson's done their research in the application process, really understood more about you and your company and what you do and the product and target market that you go after. But secondly, you can also see the approach they take. Do they just talk, 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 talk at you? Or do they ask you questions? Can you tell me a bit more about the service that you're looking for? What are the challenges you're looking to resolve? How are you moving forward over the next 12 to 18 months? If they use a question-based approach that really looks to understand you as a company and as a customer, you can then identify what they're gonna be like when they engage with prospects. The best salespeople have two ears and one mouth and use them in proportion. And by asking the salespeople you bring in to actually sell to you, you can get a sense of what they're like, how they operate and what they do. And that's gonna enable you to make a better judgment on whether they're gonna be successful in your company. So the next point is to also look for the character rather than necessarily the skills that people have. I'm a firm believer, and of course it does depend on the level of the sales role you're bringing in. But I'm a firm believer that I can teach the skills, I can teach knowledge to people, I can encourage people to learn certain things. But what I can't teach is hunger. I can't teach desire. I can't teach a determination to be successful. And the best salespeople have an innate ability and confidence in themselves to work incredibly hard, to learn, but to know that the first few months of a job is the hardest, but it's also the easiest. If they put the time and effort in and show they have the right approach, then they're gonna have a much better chance of succeeding and achieving results in month one or two or three. And you can do that by choosing the people that have the right character and the right approach. So it's very easy to appoint someone who's great at talking, but one of the mistakes that lots of companies make is they don't actually measure how good the written word is of the salesperson that they're looking to appoint. And it's something I really encourage you to do when you're considering appointing someone in your business. I've made that mistake myself. I've been wowed by someone that's come in, has got the gift of the gab, are brilliant at talking and engaging and building a rapport with a prospect, but then when I see the written words that they send out, it looks awful, full of spelling mistakes, and actually it made me embarrassed to even think they'd sent that to my prospect, because the prospect would get a really bad impression of us as a company before they even start to think about working with us. The best salespeople are not only good at the way in which they engage with their prospect, but the way in which they then follow up, the way in which they word emails, they position things in the right way, they don't waffle, but are clear and concise. And so I encourage you to make sure you actually get some written examples, and if you've got those examples, and combine that with the way in which they talk and engage, you're gonna be in a much better position to understand if they're the right fit for you and your business. So point number nine, and one of the key things that most people should do when they're actually looking to appoint someone, but actually companies fail to do it now, is to make sure you take references. The best salespeople should be able to provide references of people they've worked with in the past, who they've delivered great results for, and you should be able to pick up the phone and talk to that person. I always query when people put down referees on a CV or in an application letter that they've not spoken to for 10 years, and when I ring that person up, they say, well, it was so long ago that I spoke to them, but I'm not sure how good they are. If you get that reference from that person and you start to think, why are they putting that person in place? then it can question and make you question them as a person in general. Make sure you use and take the references up 
and be clear with that applicant that you're going to talk to those people, you're going to engage with them and find out how long it was since you've worked with them and be clear with them that that's something you're going to do as part of the process. The good salespeople and the good applicants will say, great, please do talk to that person. They'll love to share with you how I achieve results for them. The ones that are a bit more suspicious are going to start to get nervy around how you engage and that's going to tell you a lot about them and it's going to show you that actually the referees they've given are not the right people for them and are not someone that's going to know the quality of their work. Get the right references when you appoint someone or before you appoint someone. It can save you a lot of time and a lot of pain from appointing the wrong person in your business. My final point when you're appointed someone to work in your business is that you can tick every box, you can go through all of the previous nine things that I've talked about, but invariably there are mistakes that happen. And one of the best bits of advice that I was given was when you appoint someone, make a decision quickly on whether you think they're gonna be successful before you expand a huge amount of time training and giving them the support. Someone said to me once, hire slow, fire fast. You can generally tell within the first one or two weeks whether that applicant is gonna be successful. Are they staying late? Are they hungry to ask you questions about how the business operates? Are they making calls? Are they actually trying to have an impact straight away? Or are they just trying to use the first couple of months to be lazy and let things happen without them being involved? If you get that sort of engagement, the chances are, how are they gonna be any different after month one or month two? Appointing the right person is key in your business. And the first couple of weeks can be a big factor in determining whether they're gonna fit your culture and be a success in what you do. And yes, you can, show them that you have got knowledge that you can impart to them, but if they haven't got that hunger and if they haven't got that desire, the chances are they're never gonna be successful. So there are my 10 things on what you need to do as a business owner in order to be able to appoint the right salesperson. I hope what I've shared with you here is useful. And by the way, if you need any help or actually want someone to help you in the process of interviewing or bringing someone on board to join your team, then give me a call. I've sat in numerous sales interviews with people who have asked the questions around sales and how it operates. And I've been able to really help business owners get the right people on board and not just the best sales people who schmooze in the interview but then don't deliver afterwards. I can help ensure your business gets the right results and you make sure the investment you're making in this person gives you the return you want later down the line. My name's James White. I'm the UK's leading prospect conversion expert and it's great to share my thoughts and ideas with you on how you can appoint the right salespeople for your business. I hope the video is useful. Please like and share your, the video below and also tell others, friends, colleagues, people you know about the video series that we have here and the other help and support we provide at www.jameswhite.business. I've loved sharing my ideas and thoughts with you and if I can help you in any way, please let me know.